Boeing has had a string of controversies in the past few years. But did you know at one point, Boeing made a train, and boy, was it bad. The Boeing LRV, an American light rail lemon. So to set the scene, the 1970s. As part of Nixon's Vietnamization policy, U.S. troop levels in Vietnam started to decline. One side effect of this was that various defense programs had to be scaled back or morphed into civilian alternatives. One of these contracts was for the Chinook helicopter, manufactured by Boeing subsidiary Boeing Vertol. With U.S. involvement in Vietnam winding down, there was pressure to preserve manufacturing jobs. These jobs would be preserved by, you guessed it, converting the helicopter building contracts into train building contracts. Why exactly they picked trains specifically and not like, I don't know, buses? I'm not 100% sure. Pretty much every article I found either reported it at face value that Boeing Vertol was making trains or just, there's just so much money in the defense industry right now. So we just had to get them to build something. At the same time Boeing was trying to milk the government, San Francisco and Boston were in need of a new train. Both cities were attempting to modernize their streetcar networks, which both used PCCs or President's Conference Committee streetcars. These streetcars had been around since 1936, and they weren't building new ones. So the two cities formed a joint committee to try to acquire new train sets to modernize their systems. One issue the joint committee ran into pretty quickly were the two contradictory policies that made it next to impossible to find a train manufacturer that met their needs. From the 1940s onwards, the U.S. had ripped out a lot of old streetcar systems that used PCCs and other types of streetcars, like the Bay Area's key system. Because of that, there weren't really any manufacturers waiting around to build new train sets because of the suppressed demand. One solution would be to buy streetcar sets from overseas, since between Japan and Europe, someone had to be building something the two cities would be able to work with. Unfortunately, due to the new economic plan created by Nixon, there were severe limits on buying transit vehicles overseas, killing that route after a failed attempt. The two cities then tried to recreate the magic of the PCC by getting multiple cities to agree on a standard design to reduce costs. Boeing, effectively by default, won the contract in 1973 and worked with both cities to deliver the Boeing Standard Light Rail Vehicle, or LRV, as I'll be referring to it. Deliveries were delayed and gradually happened between December 30th, 1976 and 1983. There was initial fanfare over the new trains, looking much more modern to the 1970s transit rider than the old PCCs. However, from the beginning there were issues, as outlined in this 1977 New York Times article, where an electrical malfunction happened on a new train while a reporter was writing it. The amount of issues the Boeing LRV would ultimately have is long enough to have its own section on Wikipedia, and basically everything from shells rusting, doors short-circuiting, braking systems breaking down, high rates of derailment, to a reliability that by some measurements was set 15 times worse than similar trains made by Siemens at the time. The most obvious cause of the issues you could have guessed. Having a helicopter manufacturer make trains does not help with reliability. The differences in maintaining a military aircraft and a civilian train are just very different, and they weren't able to adjust. The Boeing LRV were often very unreliable, so much so that the need for spare parts often outstripped demand, at one point forcing Boston's MBTA to cannibalize some of their own LRVs in order to keep others operational. Additionally, Boeing subcontracted parts from all the countries already building light rail. Most famously, the exterior shells came from Japan, but plenty of the guts came from a series of subcontractors in the U.S., West Germany, and United Kingdom. This shrunk prototyping time and prevented a lot of problems from being fixed before full service. The other more complicated reason behind the failure of Boeing's LRV was the fact that, due to the diverging nature of San Francisco and Boston systems, making a joint committee to make a train to work with both systems was probably not a good plan. You've managed to piss off every single one of them. That was the plan. Not a great plan. While on paper, Boston's MBTA and San Francisco's Muni Metro look like they have a lot in common, both being legacy streetcar systems with some underground sections, the two systems are actually fairly different. Boston's subway tunnels are older and require very tight turns, while San Francisco's system uses both high and low platforms, and has various other needs because every line ultimately merges together and turns around at the same point, leading to unique logistical needs. From my readings, Boston ultimately got the worst end of the deal between the two cities. The Boeing LRV, in its attempt to satisfy both cities, satisfied no one. But it definitely was a much worse deal for Boston. A lot of features needed for San Francisco's Muni Metro, such as specialized doors, just weren't needed for Boston. And Boston, 
having gotten the trains earlier, also had to play guinea pig more. Boston ultimately had to do a settlement with Boeing and got several train orders canceled, which San Francisco got to buy at a discount. As soon as the last handful of units made it to Boston in 1983, the Boeing LRV's production history ended. San Francisco and Boston remained the only cities to use Boeing's light ray vehicle, with every other city avoiding it like the plague, with Siemens, Kinko Shario, Kawasaki, and a few other manufacturers choosing to build or lease enough facilities in America to allow their train sets to be sold in the U.S. Ultimately, the Boeing LRV ended up being used by San Francisco for only 22 years, with Boston lasting slightly longer at 31, with the last train being retired by Boston in 2007. However, you can kind of technically ride Boeing LRVs today still in service. Meet the Buffalo LRV, used exclusively in Buffalo, New York on the Buffalo Metro. It has shells built by Tokyo Corp, which also made the shells for the Boeing LRV. They have been in service since 1984 and continue to be used to this day and look strikingly similar at first glance. There are some key differences. Most importantly, they got retrofitted, ironically by Breda, who built the initial successor trains for both San Francisco and Boeing. I thought it was worth noting given it's, as far as I know, the only light rail train from this era still being used today. As light rail got more popular in the US and Canada, different transit agencies had to decide on which manufacturers to use and every other city avoided Boeing. Edmonton, Calgary, Sacramento, and San Diego ended up using Seaman Duogs, which were originally designed for Frankfurt, and Siemens would ultimately build a lot of future light rail in the US through their facility in California. Cleveland ended up modernizing their system with Breda trains, while Newark just kept running PCCs into the 2000s. And New Orleans just never modernized, effectively choosing to make the whole system a heritage network. Siemens, Kinko Sharyu and Breda make the vast majority of modern streetcar and light rail rolling stock in America, and Boeing left the train biz after the LRV, never to make trains again. However, during the lifespan of the Boeing LRV, Boeing actually made two other trains. The first is the Morgantown Personal Rapid Transit System in Morgantown, West Virginia, home to West Virginia University. Basically the same story as the Boeing LRV, only it was built just for connecting West Virginia University's campuses within downtown Morgantown. Interestingly, Jet Propulsion Labs of NASA fame was involved in this project as a systems manager. Personal Rapid Transit, basically trains that are single car long, have never caught on because they lack the capacity of conventional rail, but still have the high infrastructure costs with rail and stations. Duke's hospital system in Durham, North Carolina had a similar-ish system made by the Otis Elevator Company that got shut down in 2009, but otherwise Personal Rapid Transit has never seriously been tried in America again. I think it works in the context of the college, it's spread across a lot of hills from my recollection, but it's clear why it hasn't been replicated again. Oh, also, if these clips didn't make it obvious, the Morgantown Personal Rapid Transit is still around, so you can ride a Boeing train to this day. But wait, what if I were to tell you... There's three, actually. The third and final train Boeing made in the 1970s was the 2400 series for the Chicago L. The historic site ChicagoL.org did a great job breaking down the history for us. TLDR, the 2400 series, had a much better work history because Boeing and its contractors didn't design the 2400 series, just assembled it. Interior and exterior designs were done by Sundberg Farrar, who would later do the Great Society transit systems of BART, MARTA, and the Washington Metro. The car bodies were made by Portuguese manufacturer Sorfame. Much of the electrical systems carried over from the predecessor, the 2200 series, so reliability on that front was much better than the Boeing LRVs. There's a lot more prototyping and over 600 hours of testing done before service came in use compared to the LRV. The combination of the system being built for one city, much of the designs falling outside Boeing's free view, extensive testing, and Chicago having a lot more experience getting trains built in post-war America helped the 2400 series lead an uneventful 38 years of service from 1976 until 2014. The most memorable fact about them is their bicentennial livery. Boeing would ultimately not make any other trains besides these three. The Boeing LRV was somewhere between a hot mess and a disaster, having helped two cities modernize their transit systems but with horrible reliability. The Morgantown Personal Rapid Transit System was an unusual one-off that, while exists and operates to the present day, was a one-and-done project with no other city attempting to replicate it. The 2400 series, from all accounts, seems to have been a success, but it was not enough to justify future train manufacturing for Boeing. The positive to the story of Boeing's unique four-way into train manufacturing is that this situation is unrepeatable. 
They're just way more available train manufacturers than there were in the early 1970s. There really is an excuse for a bad new rolling stock. Siemens entered the U.S. market shortly after Boeing left it, and they make all sorts of great trains, including some of San Francisco and Boston's current trains, which I've run and think are pretty good. Kinky Shario and Breda, the latter of which got bought out by Hitachi, also make pretty great trains that basically cover the vast majority of train niches, including two trains used by Boston to this day and a list of systems throughout the world that they'd fill this whole screen. With the recent Stadler facility in Utah and its great electric bi-level trains, a huge gap was filled. The only gap I worry about is high-speed rail, but even with that, California got two competitive bids from Siemens and Alstroms respectively, and ultimately as the US, Canada, and Mexico build more high-speed rail, fingers crossed, the market for trains will get more competitive here. I guess one gap is the fact that nobody in the US or Canada makes monorails, but that's like hyper-niche in the context of the US, and only really in use today in places like Las Vegas, Disney World, Seattle, and a couple of airports. Ultimately, Boeing made a train that helped steer a conversation about transit in America. It showed that there was demand for the type of modern streetcar light rail type transit to succeed and led to a fairly competitive market for light rail and streetcar style trains, which ultimately helps reduce car dependency and all the great windfalls from that. Thanks for watching and see you next time.